If I stand up, that means like times. Okay, thank you, Bob. As Bob said, uh, my name is Dan Bruce. I'm from the Department of Computer Science here at Swansea University. And a uh, slight modification to uh, the uh, name there is the GPU assisted scatterplots, oh, not nice. hardware assisted scatterplots. Minor, <laughs> minor issue. Uh, <laughs> so and to update the program. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> our aim is to uh, visualize core center data. So, I just want to give you some background on core center data, um, core centers, and why they're important. In the UK alone, there are uh, 770,000 core center positions, um, which represents 4% of the working population. In the US, there's something similar percentage-wise, so about 4% of the working population. So that's equal to about 2.3 million people working in the call center industry in the US. And in some countries across the world, uh, um, Indonesia, for example, I think it's going to be as high as 8% of the working population. So we can see it's a really important industry. Um, it's also important for uh, 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 companies. Um, call centers are often the only way that companies have to interact with their clients. And obviously, they want to provide a good interaction experience. So, uh, um, and they also recognize that having a good customer experience uh, as a key differentiator between them and the competitors. So they know that if they're known as a company being easy to deal with, um, they, um, they do better than a company who's known as being terrible to deal with. Uh, as well as this, um, uh, many custom companies can uh, have been able to show that, that they have cost saving with increased customer experience. So that um, if a customer only has to contact them once, for example, it's a lot cheaper than having to contact them multiple times. So our aim is to try and uh, use data that we have from our industry partner, which are core center data, to try and improve the customer experience. So, as I said, um, our Core center data basically comprises of a single month's worth of data collected by our partner company, QPC Limited, who uh, provides uh, infrastructure with inside uh, core centers and they log a lot of data basically. So a single month of one of their customers is equal to 4.9 million calls, that's uh, for a UK bus company. Um, and then within this as well then, it's equal to over 32 million call events basically. So call events might be that you're talking to an agent that you're on hold, or that you're talking to the IVR, which is the uh, automated start bit and start asking which options you want to go through. So your typical call might just be you get onto an IVR, you get placed on hold, you speak to an agent, and then you hang out. And it records many metrics then to uh, go along uh, with these calls. So there are 70 attributes, we have to have 70 attributes for each call. Um, for example, where the agent was based at the answer the phone, um, how long you were in each of these um, different positions for. Some of these, this is like a simple course, some of the course might be a lot longer, a lot more complicated. They talk into multiple agents uh, and these sorts of things. Um, and where the agent are you talking to are based? I think there are 43 sites this customer has all across the world from Egypt, um, South, uh, South Africa, um, Romania, India, and here in the UK. So it's a really vast uh, multidimensional data set. One of the key attributes in the uh, data set is this NPS value, which is the net promoter score. So I'm sure you've had something yourself if you've spoken to a call center asking, um, can you provide us feedback? Um, so basically it's a score from one to 10 to uh, uh, try and ascertain whether you were happy with the service that you had or that you weren't. So if you were a promoter uh, of the company or you'd be a detractor from the company. So this is only available for a select few of the calls. Not all the calls get asked to um, answer this survey. Uh, but this is the key part that we're uh, trying to improve, really, trying to find some trends and data to that uh, might suggest some improvements for the NPS score. So to try and visualize the data, uh, we created a uh, software that um, uh, uses GPU acceleration uh, to create some scatter plots, just to get uh, some overview of the data, basically. So we're trying to visualize a whole month's worth of data, the whole uh, 4.9 million cores. So to do this, we used a C++ uh, language and the Qt framework to develop an application. 
And then we use some OpenGL for actually visualizing the data itself. Uh, along with this, we use some OpenCL, um, Open Create Language, to try and process the data quickly with over 4.9 million calls. We wanted some interactive um, uh, handling of the data, so we used uh, OpenCL to uh, improve this. <coughs> so, I want to uh, give you a quick video demonstration of the, um, of the software. Hardware assisted scatter plots for millions of code events. Oh, that's not what's the name of the application for months with the data loaded. On the left hand side, the number of loaded calls can be seen, along with the number of rendered calls and the number of customers. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, this is basically our uh, software with uh, a month's worth of data loaded then. So, we have here, I'm not sure you probably see it, the back is a bit small, just the number of calls, that's is 4.9, you probably have to take my word for it. Um, and then we have a little indicator bar here of how many calls we're actually displaying, so a percentage bar there. So, we're displaying actually 4.6 million calls. Uh, we've removed some of the calls because they uh, tend to be automated calls in the data, so machine-generated data where something keeps on polling something constantly every second, for example. So we remove these calls, so we try and get a more representative of just the customer calls. Uh, we've got an indicator here then which explain, uh, shows us that from all these we have, uh, some, from these 4.9 million calls, we have uh, 1.6 million customers. Uh, and here then, in our main scatter plot, we have uh, the date and time along the bottom against CES at the side. Um, CES is a customer effort score, which is a metric derived by our partner company, to try and establish how much uh, effort the, uh, the person calling in is putting into the call. For, for example, if you're on hold for a long time, you're putting a lot of effort into the call, or if you're having to explain to multiple agents the same problem, it's adding extra effort to the call. So it's almost a metric that they're trying to, the aim is to keep low, so the less effort you put into a call to get a problem solved, the better really. So we're, part of it is to try and correlate this to um, the, the promoter score, which we mentioned earlier, to try and, um, <coughs> so that um, we have a, a metric for every call, not just the ones that have been surveyed. So here we can see the peri periodicity of the call, each peak represents a day basically, and at night we have a lot lower, um, Peaks basically. Um, I should say as well that the call origin is uh, the, color, the call points, each point is a call, is coloured according to the call origin, be it a uh, uh, agent initiated call in green, a customer initiated call in um, red, or a, um, a, customer, uh, a customer initiated call which doesn't actually speak to an agent in blue. Uh, number. Um, there are, we can interact with this uh, scatter plot uh, quite easily um, by adjusting these sliders at the side. So we have a slider for the y axis, which I think will start moving fairly soon, so that we can zoom in on the data. Um, uh, it gives us uh, effectively filtering out a lot of the um, calls so that we can focus on specific regions of the data. Um, Start moving. Um, oh, I should mention first actually that we have a lot of different uh, call attributes that we can change. So um, we have uh, different attributes on the y axis, so we can change um, uh, for the customer effort score and different durations how long they, people were talking to the agent's duration, how long people were on hold duration, how long they were talking to the IVR. Um, the time of day and uh, a cost metric, which is how much the cost actually uh, call cost to the uh, provider. Uh, we also have these um, same parameters available on the uh, x-axis, with the addition of some uh, other metrics to do with time. So uh, end time of call, start time of call, um, or a, a normalized time, which takes the first time a customer as zero, and then how many calls it does after that, so we can chart uh, different contacts. So um, here we have the call duration on the, um, uh, wait duration, sorry, on the, um, uh, and the y-axis, and here we can see the zoom in using this slider here, so we're able to pan the thing using these sliders individually on the x-axis, 
uh, on the y-axis and the x-axis here. So we can well, we effectively minimize the number of days that we're showing here to try and see some more things. We can also use the mouse, so mouse wheel to scroll into in individual sections of the data. Um, this is on the x-axis, it's using the normal mouse wheel. But then if we use the control modifier as well, we're able to use zoom in on the, the y-axis. We can see some patterns come out then. This isn't to a single day, and we're able to move the scene around by clicking and dragging and panning the scene. We, by zooming in, we can almost see this strange pattern uh, appearing in the data. Uh, in the weight duration, we're not quite sure what it's for, but we think uh, what's causing it. But we think it's something to do with um, uh, different shifts coming to ends in different call centers for different departments and things, so the call duration fluctuates. Uh, we also, because of the, um, the, the distribution of the data, we've implemented this logarithmic scale. All the data is predominantly um, uh, collapsed around the bottom, so this logarithmic scale brings all the data up so that we can see a bit more of the details in the lower regions. We see some weird kind of gaps appearing in the data. And if we change the uh, y-axis to cost here, we can see uh, the layered nature of the calls. So the blue calls without talking to an agent are a lot uh, less expensive, so the cheaper calls, the customer-initiated calls in red, so they're kind of in the middle, and the, the agent-initiated calls tend to be the most expensive calls. Um, uh, to, yeah, I want to move on to uh, demonstrate the filtering. So, this is a, uh, a scatter plot showing the time of day on the uh, y uh, x-axis and the time of the day on the y-axis. Um, the size then is related to the call duration, so the bigger it is, the longer the call. Uh, the colour here is mapped to this net promoter score, which I told you about. So most of the calls are green here, which means they don't have a score correlated with them. Um, the positive ones are in orange, and the negative ones are in blue. Um, and then we have here our uh, filter panel. So for each attribute, we have an individual filter that we're able to show, and for each filter is activated by clicking the button. So on each button, we have a distribution of that uh, particular attribute over the, time, um, the frequency distribution of that data. So we have a, a brief insight into what the data looks like before we filter. Um, so we'll demonstrate filtering now. So here we're filtering away um, calls which don't have any um, net promoter score uh, associated with them and then you can see that it's quickly filtered away so they're, we're down to 180,000 calls now so we've filtered the vast majority of that very quickly. Um, the calls that have been filtered are kind of rendered in a grey opaque in the background to uh, provide some context. This is a user adjustable feature that they can remove these then. Um, I should then uh, explain as well that we have two different types of filters. One are call filters, so each individual call has its own attributes which we can filter by. And we have uh, customer filters, which uh, we're able to filter the uh, attributes of the, of the customer, uh, of the overlay calls. On clicking filter, we come up with two um, histograms, one to show an overview of the data, and another to show uh, what the data, um, what the distribution we like after the filter is applied, so we can dynamically see this. Um, and applying the filter, we can quickly apply a filter and we can see we have even less calls now. The filter button turns red to show that the filter is on. Uh, and we can also apply uh, multiple filters at the same time. So here, if we apply another filter, uh, in the logical and operation, basically. We also have a um, feature that allows us to lasso individual calls of interest to bring up some details about them, um, the more specific details about uh, each call. I think. So we had some uh, domain expert feedback to validate our software, and this is provided by our industry partner. And they were fairly happy with the program. It was the first time that they'd actually seen a whole month's worth of data um, visualized in one particular time. Um, however, they did say they wanted to see more variables in the, uh, in the data set. Uh, moving on to some future work. 
we like to make some uh, technical changes in the background, so uh, investigating using a shared context between OpenGL and OpenCL. Also looking at using um, the Vulkan API. Um, from from his feedback, we also wanted to show uh, more core attributes and test the uh, uh, test the program with a full uh, data years worth of data set uh, from the data set. Basically, we were only providing in a single month. Um, we also we've been moving on recently to agent-based visualizations to focus on agents and uh, a little bit of detection of overplotting, which is obviously an issue to be scattered on. So I'd like to thank you for the attention. Questions for our speaker, Timos? What are the hardware requirements? Any GPU would do the job? Um, to be honest, we, we've tested it with uh, two separate GPUs, both modern. Um, uh, so I think the lowest one we had is a GTX 1060 on a, on a laptop, basically. And that runs OK on that, basically. Um, OK means? Uh, it's, it's, it's interactive. It, it, can, be, it can be used. Uh, uh, um, yeah, it's not a problem. I think the biggest problem is almost the memory within the laptop itself, basically. So it's more memory bound than GPU bound, just because of the short amount of data. So. Yeah, so a, a modern graphics card, middle, middle tier, should is, is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you got some feedback. Uh, I wanted to know, you said that they wanted to see more variables. Is there anything else um, that they mentioned? Or? Um, I think that was the main feedback they provided. Uh, surely it's quite good, I can't think of it on top of my head now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so well, some uh, cosmetic changes and things like that, and some UI changes that you, you know, asked for as well. But uh, well, they all, they always went more they want more visualizations of more data. Basically, is the uh, is always what the, the company wants. So that's standard. Right? It's too bad Paul is not here actually. He's in the training session. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a member of the QPC team here. Yes. Uh, and, uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. If there is uh, time, so do you think we we'll make a difference? Because one aspect is the number of data points mm -hmm. to demonstrate that you can manage it. Then the other aspect would be the number of features that you visualize simultaneously. Yes. And you have, I believe, records of up to seventy attributes. Yes, up to yes, something like that. So then, if you try to have the power coordinates or something similar, of seventy dimensions and this amount of data points. Yeah. You have one, or? It, it, it is quite overplotted. We have um, previously, um, uh, my colleague here has previously done some parallel coordinates work um, with the same data set. Really, we work on the same project. Really, so we do have some examples of that uh, work. And I think it was published in um, CGVC this year. Oh, TVC. 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 Oh, sorry, TVC this year. So we work on the parallel coordinates of the same data set. Um, that was using only a single day, though, wasn't it? And there was yeah. a lot of overplotting issues. Yeah. That, was it? So I guess instead of having a point for each of the thing, you have a full line. So I think overplotting becomes mm -hmm. not an issue. And then the filtering kind of aspect of that would um, be more useful. Really. If I may, I will also uh, add a response to that. I guess I'm cheating. <laughs> but we will present Rich's work with the parallel coordinates of the call center data at the VIZ conference in Berlin in October, right. if you happen to be going to that this year. I don't know. And you also met Zhao, well, you met Zhao Gang that worked on the adaptation of parallel coordinates for very, you know, millions of data records. And you're welcome to like have a look at that. But his video demo is also on the database YouTube channel. But his work was especially targeted for the parallel coordinates applied to large data sets, like millions of, of uh, data records. Let's thank our speaker.